Good morning, everybody. On today's episode of Pinchy House Garage, we're gonna put the subframe back in, and we're gonna do it with Mark. With Mark. <laughs> so let's get to work, cause this is Pinchy House Garage. So here uh, is the subframe. Now the sub, um, the sway bar is probably the easiest thing you're going to install in a car when the subframe is out. If the subframe was in the car, it's a lot harder. But we're going to show you the general idea. Number one, um, you got these little bushings here and the plates. They have a hook right underneath it. You pretty much put the bushings on, put the hook underneath, and then you press it, and then you hand thread the two 13 millimeter bolts. Now, the catch is, see this hoop right here? This is where it matters the most. This hoop, try to center it as best you can. Now, if you don't center it, it's okay. Loosen the bolts and kind of like tap it over until you're in the center. Once you do that, don't tighten the bolts, just leave it alone. And we're gonna load up the uh, uh, subframe and sway bar onto the car. Mark and I are gonna remove the control arms. We only needed it for alignment purposes. Okay. Now this one, come on, go on that side. And now I'll put it down here, just like that. Now what we're going to do is that it sucks if you're going to try to install this just like this with two people, it's actually easier by yourself using a, uh, a jack. So we're gonna show you guys, you put a jack underneath it, push it all the way to the back, and then we're gonna line it up, okay? So we're gonna get the jack. Bring it all the way over here. Put this on here. Yes, my love. So back to where we uh, left off, because um, we had breakfast. Um, so you want to center the um, subframe on your jack with a piece of wood, slide it under, and then we're going to jack it up slowly and line up all the holes. Uh, the hardest one you're going to have to line up will be the, uh, the steering rack or rack and pinion, uh, because it actually has four holes to line up. The good news is that these little, little chubs right here, ow, Right here is where the steering rack actually lines up on its own. So if you can get them started on that and get one or two threads with the bolts, it should go in pretty easily and quickly. So we're going to get ready to put the subframe up. Uh, we have our new hardware. Uh, Mark uh, did, did me a solid here. And we got new, well not new, but he cleaned up all the uh, threads as best we could for the uh, steering rack hardware here. So, those are yours, mine. So what we're gonna do is push the, uh, the subframe in and try to get it up. Oh, that's not gonna work. Uh, that's how we're supposed to do it. It's not supposed to fall. <laughs> Oh, 
Hold on. This has to be on the other side of it. Which one, this one? Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Not like that, though. Okay. This has to be... Oh, gee. Alright, once again, we're going to give it another try. I'm just going to make sure everything falls into place first. Like this has to fall there. side going okay. um, I think my side's the one with the see the sway bar yeah um, because the sway bar is hitting over here that's why I can't go in so now that way, Mark and I got the uh, like two or three threads on the front um, subframe bolts on what we need to do is get the rack and pinion ready to drop because what's what the issue is that the rack and pinion has straps on it and it's preventing it from actually sitting in place correctly so we got to take those off now really with quick. the straps removed we can literally wiggle the rack and pinion to make it fall into place See if you can put those two bolts underneath here, Mark. Okay, okay. Watching it. No, huh? No. Okay, so we're off by a little bit. Yeah. Okay, try it now. No. Nothing? that's blocking it it's just trying to get the thread in okay so the issue that we have or had is that the since the sway bar is much much bigger than the uh, factory sway bar it was preventing the uh, steering rack from going into the hole right here um, so we grabbed a flathead screwdriver and pried right here just like this and pulled up and the sway bar the steering rack was able to line back up now everything's actually officially mounted in place. So now we're gonna put pressure on all four corners. So now we can thread in. The subframe by hand. Never, and I repeat never, start any bolts using a ratchet every single time you start at least a couple threads with your hand and then go from there all right so we got the subframe up there's mark again <laughs> so we got the brand new hardware for the rear and the front of the subframe the four 13 millimeter bolts right here for the steering rack everything lined up especially the way we did it um you guys can see here where the hook for the sway bar is used to mount the sway bar so you guys can see that's working, the sway bar swaying. <laughs> uh, so that's all taken care of now. Uh, the next step is to mount our control arms. Um, on this subframe, the, the nut broke and you can see that they made a hole for us to access the, put a nut in there and access the, uh, the, the bolt here. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna get a better, a new bolt that locks much nicer and get that taken care of. Um, but then uh, we're gonna put in the control arms here, and then next step will be mounting the new uh, spindle, not the new, the refreshed spind spindles. And then we're gonna show you the ball joint trick. Once we get an axle, we're gonna do a mock uh, fake axle put in so we can show you guys the ball joint trick. Um, but yeah, 
there's that. So we're gonna give you guys the next step is installing the control arms and then going from there. Okay. I got that. All right. All right, guys. So control arms are super easy. Uh, they come out the same way they removed them through the subframe. They use two 18 millimeter uh, bolts. On top of that, the rear control arm uses a little nut on top right here. Make sure you have a wrench to get that all torqued down. Um, but what we're going to do first is that we're going to torque down the subframe bolts. You always want to do those first, then the steering rack, then with the sway bar, then, no, actually no, control arms, then the sway bar. Because what's going to happen is that once everything tightens up, things are actually going to center. If you're actually going to see something right here, I'll come over here to the sway bar. But you'll see here the sway bar is actually off to the right a bit. So there's an angle here. And see how this is angled a little bit. We got to make sure we don't have that angle because this one's straighter than the other side. So when everything gets tightened up, the sway bar should um, center itself out and straighten out after that. And then we tighten down the sway bar bolts. And then these bolts here, which are 16s, 18s, and 21 for the uh, subframe. All right, so subframe bolts are 74 foot pounds with the quarter turn. Um, Control arm bolt, bolts are 50 foot, 52 foot pounds, I believe a quarter turn. Um, I forgot already the power rack and pinion, but just look up your rack and pinion uh, torque specs and your sway bar torque specs. But yeah, everything's now installed. Um, subframe, control arms, and sway bar. The only thing we got to tighten down is the 13 millimeters here for the sway bar, and we're done on that. And then the next step is to install our spindles, um, but we need to put new ball joints and then the spindle. And then we're going to show you guys the ball joint trick after that. So, unfortunately we couldn't do the ball joint trick because this thing had aftermarket ball joints that didn't work. So, I can't show you the trick, but I'll explain it to you guys just so you guys can understand how it works. So what you do is, for any reason, your ball joints fail or you just need to replace them and you don't want to take everything apart. Make sure the axle is here, so you're going to have an axle right here. Um, all you got to do is this little nut on your ball joint, you're going to break it loose and it's going to hit the axle underneath it. And what's going to happen is as you break it loose and keep hitting it loose, the pressure from the nut to the axle will pretty much reverse uh, pressure the uh, ball joint and it's going to pop the ball joint out of its socket. And obviously you unbolt everything and pop in a new ball joint and voila, you're done. That is what we call the ball joint trick. I wish I could show you guys the entire process, but unfortunately the ball joints that we had were the wrong ones, so we couldn't do it. And you forgot the washers, Mark. You said they're a rafter. No, they go on here. Oh, okay. They go on that. All right, so. Ball joints are super easy, they're just 313s and this guy, but you know, we can't show you that trick, so sorry. So we're gonna give you guys a quick rundown of what we've just done. So we mounted the subframe, we installed the rack and pinion, control arms, sway bar, ball joints, spindles are all installed now. Uh, the next part of the process is actually getting the um, getting new bushings installed on the uh, struts here or coilovers this car actually has coilovers on it so we're gonna get the new bushings installed uh, get all the get them cleaned up and mounted and then um, we're done with the subframe full disassembly and reassembly of the subframe on our patreon built mark 4 so so I'll show you guys in just a minute what's left to do